everyone and welcome to Daisy Styles. In today's video, I will be showing you the process of making one part of a bigger project I've been working on for a few months now. It all started back in August, when the talented model horse sculptor Three Slavic Horses released this adorable mare and foal duo called Pelagia and Popa. I immediately fell in love with them, and I was delighted to know that they would be released in 1 to 18 scale, which is quite similar to Schleich. I think the sculptor Yashmina picked up on my obsession with the pair because she generously offered to let me purchase an early copy so I could make a video about them. And then early October they finally arrived and they're even more gorgeous in real life. The Mare Pelagia is sculpted digitally, then casted by hand in a high quality material called resin. This makes her very heavy and a lot less bendable than the other horses you'd buy like Schleich or Collecta. Unlike Pelagia, her full pulpa is actually sculpted by hand and also cast in resin. All the details come together on this foal and create the image of a kind of frail, derpy little foal and I love her so much. They both come with these really nice certificates and as you can see I have the second copies which is really cool. Currently they are both available on her website so head over there if you'd like to get yourself a copy. Now that I've thoroughly introduced our subjects, let's go ahead and start the process of painting these cuties. The first step to any repaint is prepping. This includes correcting any imperfections like air bubbles, bumps, or seams. It's helpful to use a needle to feel for air bubbles that you otherwise wouldn't see. It's easy to miss them in places with a lot of crevices and details, so pay extra attention to those areas. And once you've thoroughly inspected your model, it's time to fill in the imperfections with 2 part epoxy sculpt. And for once, I'm actually wearing gloves, as I should. Now, since it's winter and quite cold, the epoxy takes forever to cure. So to speed up the process, I hang my models above my wall heater. It looks rather strange, but it does work. Once the epoxy is fully cured, it can be sanded until it's flush with the model. And after quite a long time of prepping, both the models are ready for paint. I say we'll start with the foal, since it's smaller and less intimidating. Even though the foal is technically white, I'm still going to give it a coat of white paint, since there are some places where the wire that is used to reinforce the model is peeking through. As usual, I am applying several layers of watered-out acrylic paint, however, this time I'm using another brand of paint, which I actually like the finish off a bit more. While the paint is drying, I set the foal under a dust prevention tent, which consists of an epoxy jar and an empty ice cream container. After, oh let's say, five layers of paint, you can no longer see the wire peeking through, and that's how you know you're ready to spray your model with sealant. I'm using Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat, as it dries very quickly and has a very nice matte finish. But on the flip side, it's also very toxic, so make sure you wear a proper gas mask for your safety. I spray in a ventilated room in my basement, and the lighting in there is absolutely horrid, so I won't be filming too much in here. Alright, the foal is prepped, painted, and sprayed, and ready to receive some color using pastels. Now, I have been using the Gallery by Mungil Soft Pastels for a long time, but I pretty much had problems with it every single project, so I thought I would invest in something slightly higher quality to see if it could solve the problem. So after consulting a few talented people in the hobby, I settled on purchasing a few shades of pan pastels. These are not cheap, but thanks to you guys watching my videos, I'm able to buy these and other supplies, so thanks guys! I mix up a light palomino shade, then start applying the pastels to the foal. I thought I had used all the tricks in the book to avoid graininess on this foal, I wore gloves, used high quality materials and soft makeup brushes to apply it, but still, there was graininess. Graininess happens when the darker pigments of the pastels stick to the protruding areas of the surface, while the crevices remain as the original lighter shade. A lot of people do not care for this look and I am one of them, I really do not like it. So before I sprayed it and sealed in that bad layer of pastel, 
I thought I would try to just erase it. I use a regular kneaded eraser to remove the pigment, and since the Mr. Super Clear sealant dries very hard, I could remove the pigment with no problems. So, now to try to correct this graininess issue. As usual, I turned to Instagram for help, and I got the same tips from several experienced painters, so it seems like the solution is gloss varnish. So the idea is that the gloss varnish helps to smooth out the surface of the model, which in turn will help prevent grain. It does seem to make sense, and I really do hope it works, because I bought two bottles. Oh, and I also bought these micro brushes, which I think will be very helpful to precisely apply pastels. Alright, so the plan is, apply two layers of the gloss varnish, then two layers of the matte varnish, since the pastels don't really stick well to the gloss. Two layers in, and I can't really see a difference, but I'm hoping the pastels will reveal an improvement. I added even more white to the mixture this time, and I'm just hoping that it will work out. I use a fluffy brush to brush off all of the excess pigment before I spray her with another layer of sealant to build up the color. Then after the layer of MSC has dried, I apply another slightly darker layer of pastel, and so on until I have the desired color. And after about 4 layers of pastel, she is virtually grain free and the color I want. I think the gloss varnish as well as doing even lighter layers of pastel all help to create a smooth color. Now let's move on to paint, and first up is markings. I'm using this picture I found on Pinterest as a reference, and I'm hoping some paint will make my foal look just as adorable. Since she has a very light color, I'm worried that she will look too cartoonish since she doesn't have really a lot of shades or shadows going on. So in an attempt to breathe a bit of life into her coat, I use white paint to highlight her molded fur texture. I also paint her eyes using brown, blue and black. Her mane and tail get pretty much the same color as her coat, along with plenty of highlights. Her hooves get a pinkish grey color along with some delicate strands of hair around the edge. And realistically, a foal could never stay this clean, so she gets some yellow and brown marks, especially on her stockings. And after a couple final sprays of Mr. Super Clear Matte, she's almost done. I just need to gloss up those eyes. And with that, our adorable little foal is done. But wait, we're not finished. I still have her big mama left, and boy oh boy, she's gonna be a challenge. Hopefully all my gathered knowledge from repainting the foal first will help me paint her mom well. Since she will have a dark base color, there's really no need to paint her first, so let's go straight ahead and spray her with gloss and then matte varnish. Again, I'm using a proper gas mask while spraying in a ventilated area. And four layers of spray later, she's ready to receive her color. Now that I was using slightly darker colors, I could really see the pigment of these pastels and I was kind of freaking out how well they were working. I'm not bothering with coloring her entirely with pastels, as most of her body will be covered by white markings anyways. And again, note that in between every single layer of pastel, I'm dusting off the excess pigment, then giving her another layer of MSC. 
and it goes layer by layer until I achieve a color that I am pleased with. After maybe 5 layers of pastel, I had darkened her quite a bit, but I wasn't really achieving all those nice different shades of brown like I wanted to. I wasn't really happy with the direction she was heading, so I decided to throw caution to the wind and just do a dark layer of reddish brown instead. Now isn't it the consequences of my own actions, this was not a good idea and after spraying her she looked like a grainy mess. Now at this point I was so tired and this was the final straw, so after ranting about how she was looking awful and how I wanted to quit, I had a good night's sleep and I came back wanting to fix her. This was during the holidays so I put on Barbie and the Nutcracker to get me in a better mood and I hatched out a plan that I thought could work to remove the grain. First I apply a layer of white mixed with a tiny bit of brown pastel all over the colored parts of the horse. Then, without a layer of MSC in between, I'm going to apply one layer of the brown shade that I want on top of the existing layer of lighter pastel on the horse. But do note that I'm not covering absolutely everything in this dark pastel. I do want some of the lighter parts to peek through to give a nice color variation. After those two layers of pastel, it's looking alright, but the spray will reveal any potential grain, so let's cross our fingers. And oh my goodness, this actually worked so well, not only to reduce the graininess, but also to really deepen the shade. Yes, I am so happy about this. Since this worked so well, I decided I wanted to continue, but oops, my camera died. It's a bit of a shame I didn't get it on camera, but I used the exact same method of two layers of pastel, one lighter and then one dark, to deepen her shade a little bit more. The discovery of this method was a big milestone for me, as it's a lot more forgiving than what I've been doing earlier, and the results turn out so much nicer. However, she's looking far from done, so let's move on to acrylics and start painting her markings. For all the markings, I always outline the shape in white, then fill it in when I'm happy with it. When I look back on my older work, I see that I have a lot of room for improvement when it comes to detailing with paints, so this time I'm trying to really push myself to add more and better details. Here on the muscle for example, you can see the massive difference some highlights and shading makes. I intentionally spent quite a while painting the face, adding details around the blaze, on the muzzle, around the eyes, ears, and I also painted the eyes. Further, I'm going to map out where I want those big white body markings. And when that job is done, I'm going to start the very tedious process of making a lot of her body white. This time I'm using another brand of paint, which is listed down below with the other materials. What I like about this one is that unlike my old one, this one dries very quickly and also with a matte finish, which means it hardly attracts any dust at all, which is great. I honestly probably did well over 10 layers of acrylic, but it does pay off to get that smooth even finish. Next, I'm going to get out the tiny detailing brush and add small individual hairs from the transition from white to brown. This step takes forever for obvious reasons, but I'd really recommend taking your time with it as it adds so much detail and realism. Though I absolutely love painting, it does take a lot of time and effort. And as someone with a lot less energy than what's normal, I have to take a lot of breaks, but things go slowly but surely. I continue by painting the hooves, adding lots of color variation to them. And I also paint the feathers to make them look a bit dirty. 
I actually got this magnifying glass with lights from my parents for Christmas and you can really see how I painted the hooves and feet with it. And then I noticed this. I was luckily able to rub most of it off with water, then I just touched it up with a bit of paint, but that was kind of terrifying. Anyways, I continue by painting her mane, some parts in black and some parts in white. And even though it might make sense to paint the mane in a solid color, I always like to add several different shades of colors like yellow, brown, white, etc. as this adds so much interest and depth to an otherwise kind of boring area of the horse. And same thing goes for the white mane. I add lots of yellows, browns and grays. And though I think it's daunting to dirty a perfectly white mane, that's something I want to get better at in 2022. To let go of the notion that the horses should look perfectly pristine and, you know, live show quality and more focus on what I think looks nice and realistic. I did work a fair bit off camera adding pinks, yellows and browns around the white markings. But now she's almost done and ready for her final spray of sealant. Now the very last step is glossing up her eyes and something very exciting came in the mail just in time for this. I had the idea to use UV resin to make the eyes perfectly glossy and a bit 3D. After carefully applying it with a needle, I cure it using a UV flashlight. And the effect is just what I wanted. I think it looks really good. And with that, my resin Marinfold duo is complete. So say hello to Gwendolyn and Paganip. In my mind, these two are owned by someone who doesn't really know how to take care of horses and doesn't really have the money to do so either, but they do their best to keep them happy in their little humble shed. And speaking of this shed, you might have noticed them standing in one, and I have actually filmed a process video of me making it, so if you'd like to see that, make sure to comment down below. And maybe you'll also notice this new doll standing with him, and I've actually made a video of customizing her as well. So comment down below if you want those two videos, which one you want first, etc. Thanks so much for watching this video, and also thanks for waiting so patiently for it to come out. And last but not least, make sure to check out 3 Slavic Horses if you'd like to get yourself a blank pair of these two. I hope you all will have a happy new year and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!